Aye. It's my attempt at Christmas decoration out in the garden. These, uh, we don't have holly in the garden, I'm afraid, but this is, uh, these are the berries from our Chinese pistache, but it's got a little Christmas color in it, so I thought it'd make a nice background uh, for this uh, video blog, the end of the year video blog, the end of 2011, coming to a close in a little over a week. So a good time to look back at the year, and it's been another good year for audiobooks for me. Um, almost 50 books recorded. I thought today I'd talk a little bit about some of my highlights of the year, some of the books I, I've enjoyed the most, and then I'll take you inside and we'll do a little, a little Christmas treat for you. Um, so uh, I've done, let's see, there was the, the two books and the Palace of Sears, continuing that with uh, those books written by Anthony Trollope. There was uh, the Eustace Diamonds, which made it onto the best audio books of the year for the Washington Post, and Phineas Redux, which I recorded, hasn't been released yet. And coming up in 2012, there'll be the last two books in the Palace of Sears, so look out for those. Um, following on from those, uh, The King's Speech I was asked to record in February, just prior to the Oscars, and of course that movie was an Oscar winner, and that was a very exciting book to read. Um, at the same time as I was recording that, I was asked to record the three, uh, the first three Vampire Chronicles by Anne Rice. There was an uh, interview with the vampire, uh, the vampire Lestat, and Queen of the Damned. Um, and those have been going very well throughout the year. Uh, then, uh, well, we did the Four Good Thief Guide to Books by Chris Ewan. There was a Good Thief's Guide to uh, Amsterdam, Paris, uh, Vegas and Venice, and it was while reading the book, The Good Thief's Guide to Paris, that I thought about taking my wife to Paris in the summer when we were planning a trip to go to Europe. The reason I was going was for the Anthony Powell Conference, Anthony Pohl, get that pronunciation right, the Anthony Pohl Conference, he's the author of Dance to the Music of Time, and they invited me over to, to give a keynote speech on, on the making of the audiobook uh, a couple of years ago, and that was, a, that was definitely a highlight of the year. Uh, let's see, coming back, um, well, it's been a full year throughout. Uh, there's a couple of books I want to mention that uh, were particular highlights for me. One was Life, an Exploded Diagram by Mal Peet. I love that book, set in Norfolk, a lot of research on accents. And uh, Tim Powers' book, The Stress of Her Regard. I mention those two because they haven't, uh, there's not a huge number of, of uh, reviews on Audible. I don't think a lot of people know about them, but I found them particularly enjoyable this year. And finally, I have to mention, this year I finally got to record my own version of Charles Dickens's A Christmas Carol. And on that note, I'll meet you inside with a little Christmas treat. See you in a moment. <laughs> may have looked nice and sunny outside, but in fact it was pretty chilly, so I made myself some nice hot cocoa come inside to sit by the fire and give you a little Christmas reading. Not from A Christmas Carol, but it's still Charles Dickens. This is from the Pickwick Papers. And numerous indeed are the hearts to which Christmas brings a brief season of happiness and enjoyment. How many families whose members have been dispersed and scattered far and wide in the restless struggles of life are then reunited and meet once again in that happy state of companionship and mutual goodwill which is a source of such pure and unalloyed delight, and one so incompatible with the cares and sorrows of the world that the religious belief of the most civilized nations and the rude traditions of the roughest savages alike number it among the first joys of a future condition of existence provided for the blessed and happy. How many old recollections and how many dormant sympathies does Christmas time awaken? We write these words now, many miles distant from the spot at which, year after year, we met on that day, a merry and joyous circle. Many of the hearts that throbbed so gaily then have ceased to beat. Many of the looks that shone so brightly then have ceased to glow. The hands we grasped have grown cold. The eyes we sought have hid their luster in the grave. And yet the old house, the room, the merry voices, and smiling faces, the jest, the laugh, the most minute and trivial circumstances connected with those happy meetings crowd upon our mind at each recurrence of the season, as if the last assembly had been but yesterday. Happy, happy Christmas, that can win us back to the delusions of our childish days, that can recall to the old man the pleasures of his youth, that can transport the sailor and the traveller thousands of miles away, back to his own fireside and his quiet home. A 
Merry Christmas to you and yours, and a Happy New Year for 2012. Take care.